So thank you so much, Aitanesh and Prabhu. I think um, most of the questions were very nicely answered. I just want to summarize the section on humility before we move to the next section. So you gave two wonderful definitions of humility. So you said, humility should lead us to the glorification of Krishna. That is the Trinata Pisunichana verse. So that was very powerful. And all the examples that you gave actually fell into that particular definition. The other definition that you gave is humility is not to let our ego come in the way of our mission. Mm. So that was also, so these two definitions actually kind of solved all the other issues that we all asked. And then in terms of practical applications, you mentioned that keep small things small, overlook provocations, uh, have forgiveness in your heart, like keep forgiving people, stand up for yourselves. And when it comes to social media, we can understand if they are their mission and Krishna is not their mission, then that is not humility. So thank you so much for a comprehensive view of uh, humility. Now, I just want to talk about the other section on uh, feel good, feel bad. So let's talk about one simple example of Arjuna. So Arjuna told, uh, so Krishna told Arjuna to fight, but the same Krishna told Uddhava to renounce. And in both cases, they both felt good. But told many times- not to fight? Krishna told whom not to fight? Krishna told Arjuna to fight, and Krishna told Uddhava to renounce. Okay. Yeah, so in both cases, both Arjuna and Uddhava felt good by Krishna's advice, and that was of course Krishna. But when we go and do our outreach, we always have this problem. Sometimes we tend towards purification, and sometimes we tend towards affirmations. We say that, no, you have to get purified, or sometimes we say, no, no it's okay, whatever you're doing is fine. Uh, sometimes, so this conflict always exists. Sometimes we just focus on saying that change your actions. And sometimes we say, just change your thinking. In fact, most self-help tools, most self-help uh, talks these days, just focus on change your thinking, but don't worry about your actions. That is, in our movement, we focus on change your actions and uh, don't worry, it doesn't matter about your thinking. So okay. again, there's this uh, dichotomy. So in the next section of our discussion, if we can talk more about, should we feel good? Should we feel bad about these things? How do we balance it? Because sometimes when somebody says, it is necessary to say that you should get purified and that, that person takes it as a good thing, he feels good. But the same advice, if you give it to another person and say that you just have to get purified, then that person might feel bad. So, yeah, I see. Yeah, so how do we know when to, say what and uh, when to feel good, when to feel bad or spirituality yeah. beyond this and so on. So that's the next This section. is actually a big subject. And I, I, want, I suspect that we might need to have a separate discussion for this. Okay. Because our discussion on humility went quite far. But I'll just make, maybe I'll address the issue, specific issue that you raised. And then depending on if, how many more questions are there, we could decide whether we want to have a separate session. So. With respect to our practice of spirituality in our daily life, you know, is it sometimes we may feel good, sometimes we may feel bad. And in different situations, different directions are given. So how are these to be reconciled? Well, I would say two, three different things are going on over here. First is that the it's like I find it often very helpful to consider the mind to be like the body. It is a domain of reality in itself. At the level of the body, if somebody's sole purpose is to be comfortable, or even the sole purpose is to be safe. Now safety is important. And certainly we don't want to trivialize, uh, uh, be casual about safety. But somebody could argue that you know, just going out in a car on a street increases the probability of an accident as compared to staying at home. 
Yeah. So does that mean one should always stay at home? Safety is important. Or uh, if we move forward, more than safety, if you safety is the basic, and we could say it's important. But more than that is comfort. Now, physical comfort is I mean, nobody in itself wants to be uncomfortable. But sometimes, uh, to grow physically, we need to be ready to put ourselves in some kind of discomfort. So, if somebody wants to be healthier, they need to do some exercises, and doing exercise itself is not always comfortable. So, just as there is, there is the comfort of the body, there is the discomfort of the body. It's a problem when both become ends in themselves. If somebody thinks comfort is the only end that they they seek in their lives, then then their life will soon become meaningless because often doing something meaningful, doing something worthwhile, requires taking some amount of discomfort. But on the other hand, if somebody makes discomfort itself a virtue, just see how how much discomfort I am putting myself in. So. Well, to make yourself uncomfortable is not the purpose of life. So it is that we need to have something worthwhile to do, and while doing that, some worth some worthwhile thing, we try to avoid discomfort as much as possible. But that doesn't mean that we have to avoid comfort also. The idea is that the body needs certain level of comfort, and as much as possible, we create a comfortable situation. But creating a comfortable situation is not the purpose of life. The purpose is that a physically comfortable situation is meant to be, meant to help us focus on a purposeful life. The same approach we can have toward our emotions also. That on an average, we don't want to have disturbing emotions within us. We don't like to feel worried. We don't like to feel angry. We don't like to feel uh, um, feel confused. There are various kinds of emotions which make us feel bad. At the same time, if we want to do anything meaningful in our lives, it means investing ourselves in something that is not entirely in our control. And as soon as we invest ourselves in something that is not entirely in our control, all these emotions will come up. Sometimes when something important for us is going wrong, there will be fear. If sometimes we don't know what to do about a particular situation, there will be anxiety, there will be confusion rather. And sometimes when something goes the opposite of the way we want, there might be resentment, there might be anger. So if one makes it the goal of their life to avoid these things, then they will never be able to do anything. Life involves confronting uncomfortable emotions also. But we don't make cultivating uncomfortable emotions the goal of one's life. It's that for doing something meaningful, if sometimes some uncomfortable un un emotions have to be confronted, that's fine. So, say for example, it's with spirituality. One extreme of spirituality, as you mentioned, is that we just want to feel good about ourselves. And that's why feeling good about ourselves means just have the thoughts about, have positive, uplifting thoughts. So, for example, some people, in the name of affirmations, they may say, I am strong, I am powerful, I, I, can, I can do whatever I set my mind on, I have all the abilities that I need. Uh, this kind of this kind of affirmative uh, affirmations uh, uh, could be healthier than just uh, if our mind is constantly having a negative script. You are worthless. You will never amount to anything. So that's so the second kind is is def it could be damaging. The first kind could be uh, beneficial. But if somebody gets caught only in affirmation and then there is no action following that affirmation and there is no meaningful action, no purposeful action. So then that is, what is the point of all that positive thoughts if there is no proper actions that are there? So we don't make in spiritual life for spiritual growth, there are times when 
our the bubble of our ego needs to be burst we if we are too full of ourselves we need to get out of ourselves but at the same time spiritual life is not so much about feeling good or is it about feeling bad it is about feeling a reality bigger than ourselves in fact feeling the ultimate reality so we want to connect with krishna and in that sense we want our feelings to be free from ourselves so if there is too much uh, that the two self congratulatory and attitude then our feelings are caught in congratulating ourselves and then they are not available for focusing on krishna on connecting with krishna on serving krishna on thinking about krishna at a basic level so we don't want that self congratulatory attitude on the other hand if there is a self condemnatory attitude if i'm constantly beating myself up then also my emotions are caught in myself and then also i will not be able to focus on krishna so in that sense we need to have a balance that if we again if we keep the purpose in mind so i want to have positive thoughts so that there are some positive actions that i i am able to do something worthwhile something meaningful and so we don't make a fetish of a feel good or of feel bad one major problem with spirituality as it is seen in the mainstream world is that spirituality is seen more as a shock absorber than as a life transformer or a, more specifically a purpose or a goal transformer so i want to do what i want to do and while i am doing what i want to do i want to feel good about myself also so that is a very utilitarian understanding of spirituality where we see it as a means to feel good but that that's not that that's a very we could say a diluted or distorted almost a distorted understanding of spirituality spirituality is much much more so spirituality is meant to be a goal transformer it reveals a higher reality to us a higher reality of who we are what the nature of the world is what we are meant to do and it transforms that goal and once it transforms the vision of our world transforms our goal and then when we are pursuing bigger things in our life then sometimes we may feel bad because there are challenges sometimes we may feel good but that higher purpose is what consumes us that is what absorbs us and that's the essence of spirituality